another look. So <clears throat> stick around for the next nine or ten minutes if you want to uh, hear some thoughts and reflections on the use of language um, and why it matters so much. Uh, and I'm also going to touch upon uh, bullying as well in this. Okay, so it's probably mostly about bullying, but with a bit of a kind of coaching focus, I suppose, which seems like a bit of an odd combination, but it is just to illustrate using real life examples why um, what we say matters. We might not think it does, but it does. Okay, so I have um, referred to this in a in a previous uh, video that I did, and uh, you know I think I, I said that I've kind of been in denial about this for many years about you know experiences at school, and you know don't look back on school years particularly fondly, um, and that is because uh, I say I find it really hard to say it out loud, but you know, on reflection, and I, I knew this at the time, but I just, you know, was in denial about it, uh, was that I was bullied. And um, it is hard to say out loud, and it's the kind of thing you, you don't really want to kind of open that box. And, you know, there was many years that were quite difficult. Um, but, you know, I got through it. But if I think about it in this context, so I am 42 years old at the moment, and uh, yes, I've kind of gotten into personal development and coaching and, you know, sorting out my mindset over the past few years in a lot of different ways. Through that, I've kind of learned that I still bear a lot of the scars from that, you know, in terms of how I view myself, you know, kind of self-loathing type th you know, thoughts, negative thinking, body image even as well. You know, I still bear the scars of the things that happened when I was at secondary school. So it is, you know, it's quite hard to to think back to things that happened at school with any degree of accuracy, you know, so we're going back quite a long time now, you know, we're going back like 20, 30 years. So, you know, your recollections of things that happened back then, um, you know, how reliable are they? And <laughs> there's even a little bit of me that kind of thinks, you know, I wonder what, the the people you know the the sort of small group of people and it was you know, you feel like a, the world is against you I think in that kind of situation where you're stuck in a um, an enclosed environment you know a school with people who seem intent on wanting to make your life really difficult um it, it feels like everyone's against you but actually you know when you zoom out a little bit I can see that it was a small number of individuals. Uh, with some kind of agenda uh, but there's been little bits of me it's amazing how yeah you know how we kind of respond to these things almost like a kind of self-blame thing where I've gone oh, I wonder whether you know the, these guys um, uh, probably don't think of it at all really don't think of me at all but um, you know if they did I wonder what the you know the justification would be would it be you know just complete denial no that never happened would it be it was just a bit of banter would it be oh well actually he did something and there's a little bit of me kind of did that oh well I wonder whether was it something I did back then uh, that caused that to happen which is is totally the wrong attitude but regardless of the reasons you know I'm never going to know why that happened Um, all I know is the you know the effect that it had on me so you know, as far as I can remember, I um, didn't have any major problems during primary school. I think it was mostly during secondary school. Um, so, I, yeah, I didn't really enjoy secondary school. And then when I left to go to uni, I found, um, sorry, my dog's whinging at me. Um, I found uni much, much better because I think it just got me out of that environment. Um, and I never really had any experiences like that I mean occasionally come close in some workplace environments but I think by the time then I was a fully grown adult you know six foot two 90 to 100 kilo bloke and you know people don't tend to pick those people to mess with or most people don't um and I think you know I'd learned a bit about the world then as well um so you kind of try and put it behind you but it's quite hard um and I think you know from then as I've kind of found my way in the world you know what I want to do what's important to me um, you know, I'm not very tolerant of that kind of thing. You know, I'm a big advocate for fairness and, you know, 
I would hope that you know, seeing that kind of thing going on in any environment I'm in now, I would hope that I would, you know, I would call it out because I, you know, I know what it's like. But it's just a real, you know, real life example of why people might say oh, it's just banter, it's just this, it's just that. But actually, you know, language matters, and I'm still dealing with the consequences of that. You know, thirty, twenty to thirty years later. Um, so now, you know, when I do coaching now, that's one of the things. Although because of the way my brain is wired. I miss, um, you know, kind of emotional cues a little bit. And I think that's because of the way my brain works. Um, and that was a consistent bit of feedback that I used to get when I was doing observed coaching sessions. But what I am quite good at is picking up on the language that people use. And language is a really, really useful way to be able to, to hone in upon how people are thinking about themselves and about certain situations. And often, you know, we don't realise that we're doing it as well. And it can be quite illuminating to dissect that in a bit more detail. Um, so there's kind of you know two aligned uh, strings to this. You know, it's kind of use of language in day to day life and personal development, and also how you speak to other people matters as well. So I'm thinking about you know workplace environments as well. You know, what does the language that's being used in your workplace say about the culture? And I think back to you know not not so much the the job I'm in just now. You know, it's quite a you know, there's a bit of a light-hearted element to how people communicate with each other, but you know, on the whole, it's quite a kind of, you know, it's quite a professional environment. I would say, um, I think you know, they've got quite a good balance in terms of the culture of how people communicate with each other. Um, when I worked in in A and E, you know, A and E is a funny kind of melting pot environment. You know, really, really stressful. Um, you know, you get all the kind of coping mechanisms kicking in for you know, essentially what could be daily trauma that people are having to deal with. Um, and you get the kind of dark humour, the black humour that comes out with that. Um, but it is really, really hard. Sometimes you know, you get banter with everyone. Where you know where do you draw the line between banter and bullying? And you know it's often it can be, uh, you know, certain individuals who almost seem to. And again, I don't want to be victim blaming here, but it seems to be there's certain people seem to draw that kind of stuff out as well, and that's not their fault necessarily. It might just be through some kind of, you know, idiosyncrasies that they have or, you know, kind of certain recurrent behaviours that they display that almost seems to make them a bit of a target for it. Um, and we certainly had, you know, there was one individual in my last workplace um, who used to, seemed to be a real target for it as well. And I used to find it a bit difficult sometimes you know as technically as like one of a you know one of the kind of senior leaders in the department like what do you what do you do in that kind of situation um you know because I think some of it was some of it was just joking and you know certainly that person would give as good as he got a lot of the time but there was the odd occasion where you just had that feeling that it was just crossing the line a little bit and I was never quite sure how to handle that um, and then I think as a kind of, you know, as a kind of leader and a manager, you have to be less passive than that, I think. And that's what I had to do was I had to just take some ownership over that, um, you know, similar to what I've had to do about the, you know, the, 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 you know, the bullying stuff in the past as well. I've just had to kind of put my hands up and go, this happened. Um, and there's nothing I can do to, you know, to change that. And I need to move on from that, you know, just kind of going, actually, I need to stop sitting on the fence about this and I need to decide is this acceptable or is it not um, and you know kind of just calling it out re really because it's that old adage isn't it you know the, the behaviour you walk past is the behaviour that you accept you know by being passive around these things you, you know you're kind of allowing them to happen uh, and I think the same goes for the bullying as well you know I think you know, if you're being bullied, it's really, really difficult, but you need to go and talk to someone about it. If you see bullying, you need to call it out. Um, you know, if, if you get wind that your child might be bullying someone else's child, you know, you need to take some ownership for that, I'm afraid. So, yeah, language matters. Ownership matters. Um, you know, people can be displaying the, um, the scars and the effects of repeated language use for many, many years. So it does matter. So very deep and meaningful for this time in the morning. Um, let me know your thoughts. Um, please share this, subscribe, like it. Um, yeah, be really keen to know what you think of it. I'll speak to you soon.